Hi everyone. In this video, I want to talk about statistics. Now, statistics are everywhere. Everywhere you look, in the newspapers, in business, in scientific research, in medicine, you're going to be seeing statistical figures and graphs. Let's discover the maths. Descriptive statistics is part of statistics, which in turn is an aspect of mathematics that studies real-world phenomena. And it does this by collecting data, often a large amount of disordered data, organizing these data into tables, and finally interpreting the data, either obtaining parameters associated with them or producing graphs known as statistical graphs. The goal of a statistical study is to obtain conclusions about a population. The population is the group of individuals being studied. It could be the inhabitants of a city, the students of a university, and so on. Sometimes the population is very large, and then it's difficult or even impossible to obtain data on all the elements of the population. In this case, we select a subset of the population that's representative of everyone. We call this subset the sample, and it's what we use to collect the data. The elements of the sample or population are known as individuals. They might be people, animals, objects, or anything else. In a particular study, the property we analyze for each of the individuals in the sample is called the statistical characteristic. There are two types of statistical characteristic, qualitative and quantitative. Qualitative characteristics such as hair color or nationality don't have numerical values associated with them, whereas quantitative characteristics such as age or height do. We'll focus here on quantitative characteristics and refer to them as statistical variables. Statistical variables may be discrete or continuous. Discrete variables can take on only a certain value or values, for example, the number of children in a family, 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. Whereas continuous statistical variables can have any value within an interval. For example, if we measure a person's height very precisely, say 1.734567, meters, it becomes effectively a continuous statistical variable. The boundary between discrete and continuous variables uh, can be somewhat diffuse. We don't, for instance, usually measure a person's height in meters to more than two decimal places. In this case, we're discretizing our statistical variable, since it can only take on certain isolated values. We won't get into this issue now, but it can be a complication when it comes to analysis. Let's say we've identified our population and we've restricted ourselves to a part of this population, the sample. For each individual in the sample, we take the numerical value of one or more statistical variables. The next stage to understand the behavior of each statistical variable is to obtain some statistical parameters and statistical graphs. If the study on the sample is to obtain information on the entire population, this is known as statistical inference. We're not going to go into detail on statistical inference, but I just want to make this comment. You'll know that sometimes polls fail. Before an election, a ballot poll is carried out. Uh, it's based on a sample selected with the aim of inferring what the final outcome of the election will be. Of course, people may not tell the truth, but a bigger problem is that the selected sample may not be adequate. So when the results of a survey don't resemble the election outcome, it's not that the statistics themselves have failed, but that there's been some other failure, such as an inadequate choice of sample. Statistical variables may be one-dimensional, where there's a single value corresponding to each individual, or multidimensional, where there's more than one value, so that more than one aspect is being studied. In the case of two-dimensional statistics, 
we're dealing with two statistical variables and collecting two different values for each individual. I hope you found this useful. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't already and hit the bell to uh, receive notification when we upload a new video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again very soon to discover more maths.